All right, so I'm currently on the phone with Rhodes Diablo. He's another musician that reached out about the interview series. So I'm going to go ahead and give him the chance to introduce himself. Hello, everyone. Um, like the gentleman said, I'm Rhodes Diablo. I've been uh, a musician since I was, um, well, professionally since I was 19. Toured and did a bunch of records and all that stuff. I'm currently in Nashville. And uh, for the past two years, because of COVID, I've been doing a lot of remote uh, recordings with uh, different artists and releasing music uh, on a monthly uh, basis, raising money for Music Cares, which is a, a, a amazing uh, organization that helps musicians with everything from drug addiction to uh, paying your bills to you know whatever you need uh, monetarily there. They've been there for uh, a lot of the people that have been involved in uh, this project. And uh, that's, yeah. Cool. So uh, why don't you tell me about, you know, how you first encountered music? You know, what about it kind of spoke to you? What made you decide that you wanted to pursue a life with music? Um, I guess that dates back to, um, well, I was probably like 10, like nine or 10 of my, uh, my parents uh, bought me a, uh, this will shows my age. Uh, they bought me like a little, uh, like portable uh, phonograph, you know, like a little turntable. And uh, they didn't know anything about what kids are listening to. So they asked my, my neighbor who had a son who was like 16, 17. And um, he suggested T-Rex, Alice Cooper and David Bowie. So they bought me the albums that were out by those three uh, artists at the time and um, kind of sent me down my merry path towards uh, <laughs> you know, self-destruction and everything else that goes on with the rock and roll trip. So, yeah. Sure. So once you kind of figured out that, you know, that was the pathway that you wanted to go, you know, what did you uh, first do to kind of, you know, take the steps down that path? Did you learn an instrument? Were you like writing vocals? Uh, how did you kind of begin that journey? Um, well, when I was um, I, probably like 15 or 16, I, I got into the Ramones and the Sex Pistols and the Damned and all that 77 punk and when I heard that, I was like, oh, my God, I mean, I can do that, you know, because, you know, every, every guitar player, you know, was into Eddie Van Halen and Jimmy Page and all these guys that, you know, were to my simple, stupid mind living in suburban America. It was just like beyond my scope. So, you know, hearing somebody like Steve Jones, you know, playing these insane riffs and Johnny and, you know, Johnny Ramone just playing this buzzsaw guitar i mean it just i'm like man i could do that so i told my parents i'm like buy me a guitar <laughs> I, I want a guitar for christmas and that's how it went down you know okay and so did you learn guitar by you know emulating uh those bands that you wanted to like be like or did you kind of uh take like traditional music lessons what was uh you know your process for learning um, well, at first, my parents um, sent me to this school um, where it was like 30 or 40 students and we're all sitting there with our respected guitars. And it was kind of ridiculous. And I, I, after three, three or four times of going to that madness, you know, I was just like, I'm just going to have to sit down with my little, you know, with my stereo system and, and start picking it up by ear. And that's what I did, you know. And, you know, plus, you know, having friends that play guitar and, you know, they'd kind of show you little things here and there, you know, to kind of get your get your role and, you know, just like anything else. Nice. So relatively self-taught. Oh, yeah. Yeah, totally. You know. OK. And so with that being the way that you kind of did it, um, were, did you also kind of start figuring out how to like put lyrics to it and then do like a full composition of a song? Or how did you kind of figure you wanted to approach that? Um, well, it's kind of weird because before I even started really thinking about playing an instrument, I was really into um, into writing lyrics and stuff. And I was always writing poetry. But, you know, it's like 
you know, I mean, growing up in the, in the late seventies, you know, if you, if you said you were a poet, your friends would beat you up, you know, and just like be stupid, you know, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I come from a time period where like, you know, one, one year I have long hair and, and, and bell bottom jeans. And then I go into my 11th grade year and I, I have stovepipe jeans and ripped t-shirts and, a, you know, a, a buzz cut and, Mm-hmm. People are like beating me up in the parking lot, you know, while they're blasting <laughs> 2112 by Rush, <laughs> you know, and that's, that's kind of how I came up. And, uh, so, you know, once I figured, well, I'm probably going to get girls more by playing guitar than I will by, by you know, like writing poetry, I, <laughs> you know, I kind of, kind of jumped in that rabbit hole you now. Okay. And then, so at some point, I imagine, you know, you started playing more, started writing more, and you had a bunch of songs you wanted to put to either play or release. Uh, did you get, like, uh, other musicians together to work on a band? Or how did you kind of take that next step to start promoting your own artistry? Um, well, the first thing I did was I I uh, bailed out of college and I moved to Los Angeles and with, with you know with not knowing anyone and not having a really you know a couple hundred bucks in my pocket and you know and i just started looking for a band and you know because that was the only way i knew i, I was going to get anywhere you know i mean there wasn't like a school or i mean all the cool things that you have now with youtube and and all that stuff you know mm-hmm. you just you know you don't have that you don't have that back then you didn't have those resources, you know, you just had to go and just jump into the fire and go for it. And that's what I did. You know, I just went looking for people that were in the same shit that I was into and, you know, and started playing in bands. So. Okay. And then, um, once you did start playing in the bands, how many bands do you think you went to before you kind of, uh, either kind of branched out on your own or kind of hit a streak with a particular band that you were very comfortable with? Yeah, that took probably like five or six years before I got in a band where, you know, we actually, you know, put out music and like toured, you know, toured the country and stuff, you know, you know, where it was like, you know, the, the nineties indie kind of thing, but, you know, I mean, it put, you know, it, it put food on my table and paid my rent, you know, for a long time. So, but it was all, you know, that just, it came back to, you know, me being into a punk rock dude and that, you know, that do it yourself mentality. You said you went through a bunch of different bands about five different years of trying to find a good band until you, you know, were able to strike out on the road. Um, where do you think it kind of went after that? What, what happened to that band? And then, you know, where did you end up after that? Um, well, we, you know, we're doing quite well. And then we, we signed with this, um, this indie label and, and, and this management company and, and we had everything recorded, but they wanted us to sit on the material for like a year. And then, you know, they had this big plan to, you know, how they were going to market us and stuff. But by then, you know, we had lost the momentum that we had from constantly, you know, touring ourselves. And so by the time the album came out and we got back on the road, it was, it was kind of, unfortunately, it was kind of like flogging a dead horse at that, at that, you know, at that point, you know, and, you know, that's kind of the, you know, the downside to the industry, you know, and <laughs> yeah, it gets, it gets a little tough out there after. Yeah. You know, yeah. I was, a, yeah, I, I, I was a part of that lesson. So, you know, once that did happen and you kind of reached that point where, you know, you were moving on to the next thing, uh, how did you kind of figure out what that next thing was? Um, you know, well, the band that I was in was, it was a band called Mustang Lightning and we were kind of like a, like this, like, a like a post Stray Cats kind of like rockabilly surf band, you know, uh, we were like like in the bands like the cramps and the gun club and, and the Reverend Horton heat, you know, we did a lot of shows with bands like that. And, um, 
And, but while I was in that band, I really got into, um, like old school, like, like outlaw country, you know, like, like Willie Nelson and, and Waylon and Billy Joe Shaver and David Allen Cole and people like that. And that was kind of where I was, my head was kind of going towards at the time. So when the band broke up, I mean, that's, I was like, well, here I go. <laughs> you know, so that's, that's when I kind of took the reins and started writing songs and, you know, kind of like do my, 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 you know, take on, on what, you know, my influences were and stuff like that. Okay. And that kind of brings us up to, you know, kind of where are you now? Um, what are you working on? Uh, you know, what are you using your musicianship to create and where would you like to see that go? All right. Um, well, um, you know, I, after, after all that stuff, you know, I, I, I did like a bunch of crazy things. Like I, I was in a production of Hedwig and the Angry Inch. If you're uh, at all familiar with that, it's about a, a rock and roll drag uh, or a, a, a guy has a sex change and it goes wrong and he's a rock star. And it's like a crazy movie that uh, John Cameron Mitchell did uh, uh, like in the early 2000s. And I was doing that and doing, you know, just weird like theater stuff in new Orleans and, you know, and trying to find myself. And, um, you know, I was kind of doing my own thing musically for a long time until COVID hit, you know, I was doing like hired gun things where I would literally meet people on stage and I'd be introduced to the band and I just go with keys the next song. And, uh, you know, I did that for a long time. Um, but when COVID hit, I kind of, you know, got insular and like retreated into my home and built a studio and started doing remote work with, uh, and started like, you know, reaching out to people that I admired or people that I had worked with, you know, or people that I wanted to work with and started doing these singles, um, uh, to raise money for, uh, music cares you know, and everybody that I've worked with, um, on these singles have been, you know, have been affected by music cares, you know, like some, you know, and, um, and that's what I've been doing for the last two years is, is that kind of thing. Okay. And so you're producing uh material out of your own project studio kind of thing and just yeah. uh, working on it remotely like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, cool. I, um, I did, a uh, I, well, the most, I guess the most successful single that I've done so far is um, I did a collaboration with Cherie Curry, who was the uh, original singer for The Runaways, which is like Joan Jett and and, um, and uh, Lita Ford's first band. I mean, they were like these, you know, four, four or five, uh, five teenagers in like the mid 70s that, you know, they came out and just you know, they changed rock and roll, you know, it's like they were, they were really, you know, they gave like women a lot of, a lot of space in, in this, in the music community, you know, because of what they did. So working with her was a real thrill, you know, and I, I've worked with, uh, with Tiffany, the pop star from, uh, from the eighties. I did a, a, I got her to do a really, badass rock and roll song and I've worked with Peter Holzapple and it's played with REM and Hootie and the Blowfish and just a bunch of other people, you know, a lot of people you never heard of, you know, and just putting out singles like, you know, one or two a month, you know, for Jesus the last almost, yeah, about closing on 24 months, you know, that's cool. That's yeah. very consistent. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, cause stay busy or go stagnant you know right 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 um awesome so you've been around and playing music since uh late 70s early 80s around there what are some of your uh favorite memories that you know have stuck with you and kind of keep motivating you to keep going after so long um man it, it <laughs> as corny as it sounds it, it really just it really what keeps me going is just like, just, it, it only takes like one person to come up to you and like, you know, and they tell you like, 
that you're badass or something like that, you know, or like what you did changed their life, you know, in whatever way. I mean, you know, and you know, that's, that's what it keeps. Plus, you know, I mean, I love music. I mean, it's in my DNA. I mean, I can't even think of doing anything other than music, you know, that would keep me sane, you know? So, sure, sure. you know, it's, it's really, a, you know, it all falls under that umbrella, you know? Um, okay. And where can uh, people find what you're putting out? All the tracks you've been putting out over the past couple of years, where, where are you uh, releasing them? Um, it's under Rhodes Diablo. And I mean, you can find it um, on iTunes, Spotify, uh, Amazon. Uh, Pan- I mean, you know, all, all the usual suspects, Deezer, uh, Pandora, uh, uh, iHeartRadio. Um, you know, I, I basically put stuff out through distro kids. So it goes to to all the, you know, all the, all the online outlets and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I always like to give the person I'm interviewing the chance to put out their last word. So just something you believe in that you want to throw out there. (laughs) I believe that everybody should be cool with each other. It doesn't matter, um, what race you are, religion you are. Um, what your sexual preference is, uh, how you want to present yourself. Everybody should just agree with everybody. Unfortunately, um, especially in this country now, that's, you know, it's been a really tough road. But, um, you know, I mean, if you go back and you read about anybody from Jesus Christ to Gandhi, you know, I mean, Krishna, anyone, they all say the same thing. You know, it's like, love everyone and basically don't be an asshole <laughs> you know and uh, that's that's just my word is just like stick true to yourself and don't be an asshole you know accept everybody on their terms 